Shalom, Israel. It's your brother, Marcus G., back with yet another Truth for Thought. First and foremost, I must give all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High. I must give all honor, praises, and glory to the Most High. Second of all, I know y'all probably see um, my braids. I'm taking my braids down here. Um, getting ready to um get them rebraided. So had to start taking them down. Um, nevertheless, you know, gotta gotta keep the truth coming out. So even with them starting to get taken down, the rest still up here. I still still have to keep getting this truth out. Um. Second of all, I want to continue to um, stress to you, Israel, to keep one another in prayer. Um, things are getting to a climax fast, and a lot of our people are going through a number of things. So we we definitely want to be there for one another, support one another, um, especially through fasting and praying. All right. With that said, let's get straight into the title. All right. Um, Babylon. Um, they they, and some actually. This was someone asked me to talk about this, and and this was kind of something that I I was going to talk about a long time ago, um, because it was just being brought about at that point in time. But this is in regards to Babylon and some things they want taken out of every level of education's curriculum. So before I um before anything else, let me um share my screen. Get we're gonna start off in the Bible. All right, so we're gonna start right here at Psalms 80. Three. Um, and there's a certain part out of Psalms 83 that I want you to pay very close and specific detail to. All right. Psalms 83. And we're going to get all of this down to verse 17. A song or psalm of Asaph. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace and be not still, O God. So it's obvious that there's an Israelite here that's praying. Verse two, for lo, thine enemies make a tumult and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. Verse three, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. So for, for those who still, for whatever reason or another, think that the Most High doesn't have a chosen people, it's being called out yet again here in Psalms 83, they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. So this is this the people that it was talking about, the hidden ones, is... Israel, it is you, Israel, all right? For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab and the Hagarines, 
Gabal and Ammon and Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyr. Ashur also is joined with them. They have hope in the children of Lot, Salah. Do unto them as unto the Midianites, as to Sisera, as to Jaban, at the book of Kishon, at the brook of Kishon, which perished at Endor. They became as dung for the earth. So now this Israelite in the prayer is including some things that, excuse me, it's including some things that he would like to happen to these enemies. Make their nobles like Oreb and like Z, yea, all their princes as Zabah and as Zamuna, who said, let us take to ourselves the houses of God in possession. Oh my God, make them like a wheel as the subtle before the wind, as the fire burneth a wood, and as the flame setteth the mountain on fire, so persecute them with thy tempest and make them afraid with thy storm. Fill their faces with shame that they may seek thy name, O Lord. Let them be confounded and troubled forever. Yea, let them be put to shame and perish. So he's asking the Most High if these enemies, if he would put these enemies to death. Literally, these same enemies that said, come, let us cut off the name of Israel from remembrance. Now, to do that, there are a couple of ways to do that. Just tr try to kill them all off would be the first thing that would have to happen. And then to keep Anyone from remembering that which they cut off. So I'm going to share my screen. And that's what cut from remembrance means. Basically, let's not even remember. We don't even want this place to exist or the these people to exist to a point that they can't be remembered. All right, so I'm going to share my screen, but this time I'm going to share my screen right here. And the title of this, we're going to look at some things of the world just to see if Babylon is attempting to cut Israel from remembrance and from those of you that don't know the United States is the is Babylon alright so here's the title these are the states that pass laws restricting the teaching of racial history that's another thing um, slavery has a new proverb or byword in that slavery is now being referred to as racial history. I cannot make this up. This is the world we live in today. And, and they literally have began to call slavery 
racial history. Let's read some of this. The latest culture war in education is being fought over how schools teach racial issues and episodes in U.S. history. So the people that be, not the power that be, these people have no power, but the, the people that be, They want to regulate how schools, and I promise you, you're going to see this is on every level. How schools teach racial issues and episodes or pieces or parts in U.S. history. Now, I went over some things in a truth for thought entitled some real American history. And a lot of it, a lot of uh, those massacres, I was not taught about. Just point blank. I was not taught about. Um, which is crazy because if if you don't learn quote unquote US history, <laughs> they can they can fail you. Yet they don't teach you all of US history. And now I went to school. It, it's finna get worse for children in school nowadays. They're gonna learn less and less. The reason that this is an issue is because this particular part of American history is some of the history of Israel. But now they just want they just want it to go away. They, it, it, because it's not important to them, it's not important at all. Let me get a little bit more of this. That has led to a slew of state legislative measures that limit or ban discussions touching on sensitive topic of race. Some extend the prohibition to teaching about sexism. Future Ed has identified 47 bills. This is how hard. This is how hard they are trying to cut this from remembrance. Future Ed has identified 47 bills introduced or prefiled this year in 23 state legislatures that limit teaching on these topics. Alabama, Arizona, Idaho, Iowa, New Hampshire, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Texas, and Utah have enacted 11 of these bills signed into law by their Republican governors. And another bill is awaiting signature from Alabama Republican Governor Kay Ivory. I'm going to read just a little bit more of this. Some of the bills, like Arkansas House Bill 1218, explicitly preclude the teachings of the New York Times 1619 Project, which frames American history in the context of slavery or critical race theory, including South Carolina House Bill 4325, Others like West Virginia Senate Bill 558 prohibit teaching divisive concepts 
including racism and sexism, those that make students feel guilty because of their race or those that make a student feel inherently racist because of their race. And two Wisconsin bills limit training on ra racism and sexism for K, K through 12 and higher education educators. But it says that they have a reason for doing this. And this reason is it makes students feel guilty because of their race or those that make a student feel inherently racist because of their race. There's a reason why certain students feel guilty because of their race. It's because it's the truth. And the forefathers of those students did it. But these are some of the reasons they want to cut this from remembrance, they don't want to deal with that which they did. Furthermore, it says, but there are these other students which are Pretty much the students who are descendants of a certain biblical nationality of you, Israel. These, these students It makes them feel inherently racist because of their race. No, the Bible itself says an oppressed man or a wise man is angered by oppression. That doesn't mean that the man is racist. It, but the, this is the way that the world is. This is. The world says because you acknowledge that that the world did this to you, you're the racist. What? But but y'all did this to to my forefathers. How how am I the racist? But again, it it, it comes, it, it literally show that the the world is showing you the Bible to be true. They literally have 47 bills, and we finna look at them. We finna look at them. 47 bills. To keep educators from teaching about slavery. Or to keep students from learning about slavery. But slavery is a, that is a part of our biblical nationalities history. See, when they was doing the stuff of slavery, they weren't worried about this. And I know it's probably going to be somebody going to watch this. You're going to be like, well, that happened 450 years ago. I'm sorry, the same things are pretty much still happening today. They, they've literally um, 
with the advancement of technology, <laughs> it didn't just stop at it, 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 a cell phone. Um, they are still killing a certain biblical nationalities dead in the streets today. You can still see chain gangs out here building highways today. Here go, here go an argument. Somebody, they, they just going to think that they're smart. Yeah, but they get paid like a dollar an hour. That, that's the, the, they get paid a dollar an hour to build highways for you because, you, you know, you say you're a taxpaying citizen. One you'll be driving on soon. And you literally open your mouth to say, but they get paid a dollar an hour. That's peanuts. And this the thing. It didn't just start today. This is still continuing to happen. Let's look at let's look at some of them. 47 bills to cut Israel off from remembrance. These are the different states, as you can see. These are the different states. These are the actual bills. I want to look. At, 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 at what some of these say. Prohibits all the way from kindergarten to 12th grade schools public and, pub, and public institutions of higher education from teaching certain divisive concepts relating to race or sex. That's, this is how they're categorizing they're categorizing it as racial history or a divisive concept. That that's that's crazy. That's in that's one of the one of the three in Alabama. Let's look at this one. HB9, labor prohibits state and political subdivisions from teaching divisive concepts. Relating to race or sex in training prohibits same for state contractors, Department of Labor to review state agency training programs. Public education prohibits teaching of divisive concepts related to race and sex, prohibits classifications of students based on race. And penalties. Well, I'm sorry, Esau. I'm sorry to all other biblical nationalities. Y'all did the shit. But that's just the truth. But y'all can't stand to be called to accountability by, by any means necessary. Y'all feel like y'all can just run from accountability. But that's okay because be it by force or by choice, accountability will be held. Remember, I'm saying that this early in the truth for thought. This early in the truth for thought. So you can see, and I have the link 
to the description of these um of all the material that's used. But you can see Alabama, even in Alaska, that they, they don't want anyone to learn about America's original sin. I, that, that's how um that's how What's what's his name? President. That's how Joe Biden said it. Cause this is not the first I'm touching on this. I did a truth for thought call, an examination of some real American history. I did another one where Joe Biden was giving reparations to the nations of Africa. for the enslavement of people that, that were brought from Africa. This is just crazy. Because the reparations are being paid to the, the country of Africa. And I, ta I talked about what real reparations will be for us anyway. It won't be in the form of any monies. There there is not enough money to pay for the blood loss. But I'm going I'm to kind of go into that again a little later. But as you see, Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, Florida, Georgia, Idaho, Indiana, Iowa, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maine, Michigan, Minnesota, Mississippi, uh, Missouri. I think Mississippi got more laws down here than they got counties in the motherfucker. Look at this. Look at all them from Mississippi. Missouri, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, North Carolina, North Dakota. Ohio, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, South Carolina, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, Virginia, Washington, West Virginia, and Wisconsin. In all those, not cities, but in all those states, every city in those states. It's only 50 states that comprise the United States. There are already 47 bills in all those states that we just saw. Trying to cut from history the remembrance of, the observance of, the fact that it even happened. Slavery. That is exactly what we read in the Bible in Psalms 83. And it is, they are literally dead serious trying to do it. In fact, I want to look at two of these states. The first one, because we did the first royal gathering in Texas. And um, I want to ask the people that live there in Texas that was there. There's something, that, there's a statement that they make at the very beginning of this. I want to know how true this is or if any of the people that live in Texas that was there, if they know this to be true or not, right? Every morning, school, well, let me let me get the uh, title of it. So that we'll, we'll know what the title is. 
Texas pushes to obscure the state's history of slavery and racism. There you go. They don't want anybody to remember they nasty little secret. That, that's what it comes, that's basically what it comes down to. That, that's the, the same thing with the other 47 bills that 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 they they've passed. But I'm extremely interested in knowing this very first statement. To people of Israelite descent who send your kids to schools in Texas, do you all know this? Because I, I never knew this. Every morning, school children in Texas recite an oath to their state that includes the words, I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God. Do y'all know that? If you live in Texas and you send your son or daughter to a school, do you know that this is how they start their day off? By pledging their, their allegiance to their state, which includes the words, I pledge allegiance to the Texas one state under God. Now, the reason I'm asking this is because I can't recall how long it's been since here, where I reside, since they took praying out of the school. We used to do it when I was in school. Oh, it's not there today. We used to get a Bible. You don't get one at school today. And we used to have to say the Pledge of Allegiance. They stopped doing that while I was in school. Yet in Texas, and this is per this, this is the New York Times. This was Back on May the 20th. And it's been updated as of May the 19th of 2021. So as of still in 2021, every morning, Texas children, school children, recite an oath to their state. And I really want to know, to any Israelites or any obvious descendants of an Israelite. Do you know that your child does this every morning? Because I didn't know that this was the case, that this still goes on in any state, let alone Texas. Now a flurry of proposed measures that can soon become law will promote even greater Loyalty to Texas. Wow. This is their wording. I, I'm not making this up as I go. It literally says, now a flurry of proposed measures that could soon become law would promote even greater loyalty to Texas in the state's classroom and public spaces. Excuse me, in public spaces, as Republican lawmakers try to reframe Texas history lessons and play down references to slavery and anti Mexican discrimination that are a part of the state's founding. Again, this was wrote by the New York Times. This is all their wording. But now again, we just looked at those 47 bills and saw all the states. Now, 
that to date have a bill or multiple bills to do the exact same thing in all those other states. The proposals in Texas, a state that influences school curriculums around the country through its huge textbook market amount to some of the most aggressive efforts to control the teaching of American history. Listen to the wording. Listen to their wording. And they come as nearly a dozen other Republican-led states seek to ban or limit how the role of slavery and pervasive effects of racism can be taught. Now, I want you to keep in mind, Israel, a bunch of these lawmakers are some of the most racist there are. What they're doing is they're keeping you from pointing them out. That, that's, that's one of the things they're doing. But they also see, and it's part of their history, it's part of American history. But in that part of history, somebody shit stinks while someone else's, while someone, uh, some other people are getting shitted on. Now, the fact that somebody's stuff stinks that 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 don't sit well with those very same people let me read let me go on and read the rest of this because I want to look at one other state Idaho was the first state to sign into law a measure that would withhold funding to they will stop giving the schools money that would withhold funding from schools that teach such lessons. And lawmakers in Louisiana, New Hampshire, and Tennessee have introduced bills that would ban teaching about the enduring legacies of slavery and segregationist laws or that any state or the country is inherently racist or sexist. They want to cut all of this away out of, they just want it all to just go away. An integral part of history and they just want it all to go away. So now I want to look at one other state. That was the New York Times, right? Now I want to look at The state of Oklahoma, right? And it says, Oklahoma Republican introduces bill to limit how slavery is taught in schools. There is, how many different ways can you teach about slavery? That's another question that when I was reading of all this stuff, I was thinking to myself, how many different ways can you teach about slavery? There are not, it's not like you can take 5,000 different avenues to talk about slavery or to teach about slavery. A 
as complex as the networking and everything was um, in regards to slavery in that time, it was a very simple thing. It, it you, it's it's not multiple ways to teach about the oppression of a certain people by all these other types of people. It it there is not like a, a formula where you got to this shit ain't rocket science. So Every time I see how slavery is taught, you can't teach it but one way. There's only one way to teach about slavery. It's just to go right into it and, and teach it. But I want to see, this is, as you can see, um, ABC News. A new bill proposed in Oklahoma State Legislature would limit how slavery is taught. Again, I don't even know if there are multiple ways to teach it, but how slavery is taught in schools and ban teaching that one race is the unique oppressor or, vi or victim in slavery's history. Are you serious? What race, how many different races fell victim to slavery? L look at the crafty council. Look at them try to real quick before I before I finish reading this. Before I finish reading this, real quick, I just want to make sure. <clears throat> I just want to I just want to make sure of something real quick. I want to I want to see something real quick. So, what I want to do, I want to share my screen again. I cuz I just want to look at one one. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. I cause I just and I just want to look at one verse of the curses. There are multiple ones in here, but I just want to look at verse 68 alone. Right. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. Here, Egypt is hard bondage. He had all the most high had already brought his people out of the actual place known as Egypt. So, this is not the place Egypt, all right? And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt not see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women and no man shall buy you, right? You see, this is talking about slavery, right? This is talking about going into slavery by ships. There's only one place where that has happened. Well, there's only one people that this has happened to. But one of the places that this these ships may dock is here in good old United States of America, also known as Babylon. But they don't want, and this truly happened, this curse truly happened, right? And 
I just wanted to touch that because they want to say they want to keep it from being known that there was a certain people that was responsible and there were many biblical nations that were responsible. So even with how it's being taught, it's not being taught to its fullest, even to even before all these bills, well before all these bills. But they don't want anyone to know that there was an oppressor and a victim of oppression. That is crazy. They might well just want to take the word slavery clean out of the vocabulary, which they have. As, as you've seen, they've, they've changed the word slavery to be racial history. That, that's what they, that's, that's the word they came up with. Say those words are kinder. They're kinder and they're gentler. <laughs> Let me finish reading this. Republican State Representative Jim Olson filed House Bill 2988 this month, and it has already caused a backlash from lawmakers and teachers. The bill prohibits state agencies and public school districts from placing culpability on one race and teaching that one race is the unique oppressor or another race is the unique victim in the institution of slavery. Well, what was it then as far as in America? What what explain exactly what slavery was then? I would love to ask Jim Olson. Then what exactly was slavery? Just out of curiosity and wanting to hear a very ignorant, prideful. Edomite speak. They can, they do not like. See, the truth was I right, as long as we didn't understand it and we didn't understand the ramifications of such. We didn't understand the ties that it had. with things such as the Bible. See, as long as we didn't understand things like that, it was okay. They've been teaching about it the whole time prior to. Now they want to cut that out of history. They, they won't America's original sin just wiped, wiped away. Like I said, that's what their president, that's what he calls slavery, America's original sin. Further, the bill bans teaching that America has more culpability in general than any than other nations for the institute of slavery or that the purpose for the funding of America was the initiation and perpetuation of slavery that's exactly what it was what then what was America built on What did all that money from all that cotton and all that tobacco, what did it do? It didn't build this place. All those fields, all those proceeds 
was charity. Y'all, they must have gave it all away from char to charity based on what he's saying. Another stipulation of the bill is to ban teaching that America has slavery more extensively and for a latter period of time than other nations. See, the problem with that is the, the truth is just that, Mr. Olson. The motherfucking truth. These people hate that the truth is being learned and now they want to all out erase the truth. I tell you about these prideful, these other biblical nations, boy, and that pride in them. It also prohibits the use of the 1619 Project, a long-form journalism endeavor by the New York Times that examines slavery's role in the founding of America. That is exactly what it was for this place. Journalist Nicole Hannah-Jones, who led the 1619 Project, called the bill and others like it anti-history memory laws that are opposed to truth on Twitter. Why hasn't that caught on yet? Why isn't that by word or or, 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 or proverb called on anti history memory laws? <laughs> wow. Public schools that fail to comply. This is in the state of Oklahoma. But see that the State Department of Education withhold up to Five percent of their monthly state funding under the bill. If the entity compiled after a violation, funding would be restored. If a entity complied, excuse me. So if you don't comply, they will withhold funds from the school. If the school decides, no, we're going to teach the truth anyway, and it's not the complete truth, even that that they do teach you. But hell, I guess you just, some is better than none. If one school did that, then that system of schools would lose its, they would lose 5% of their monthly state funding. Similarly, state supported, supported two year and four year higher education. So your junior colleges and your all out colleges wow you don't go to college till you're grown they want to control what even the grown people learn listen to this similarly State supported two year and four year higher education institutions that failed and comply could have 10% of state funding withheld. If passed, the bill would take effect November the 1st, 2022. Olson defended the bill, telling NBC affiliate KFOR it insists upon. And teaching, and he wouldn't even say the word slavery in balance and in context. That Olson is bull 
Because whether you want to utter it out of your small, thin ass lips or not, there was no balance to slavery in American history. Yes, there was one oppressor. And as far as a biblical nationality, there was only one victim. That particular victim is made up of 12 individual tribes. Yes, did that right that particular piece of American history was how it was this this place Babylon was founded on their backs and it was your people who was the master oppressor here in the United States. It's that simple. Mr. Olson. But I want to show y'all some of the things they want to. They want to just go away. Just, just make it just go away. I'm not even going to look at all of them. But this right here is the transatlantic slave trade um, database. There are over 2,405 manifests. Over 2,400 manifests. And look at the numbers of captives. Because I want you, y'all, y'all see like 290, 350, 342, 516, 515. Because we're going to look at something else that I, I, I brought out. When I brought out some real American history. But look at those numbers, right? 471, 478. Look at those numbers, because we're going to look at this right here, because this is something else that they really want the world not to even remember, because they don't even want to remember the death toll. Here you see it literally says 60 million dead in the hands of White Christian imperialism. Does that mean there was a master oppressor? They weren't. They were referred to. I didn't write this. I didn't write this. But let's look at it. I just want to read a little bit. The largest slave trade in the history of the world. Yes, it was America's original sin. But listen to this. Was created by white Christian Europeans. Was there one particular race? Because Mr. Olsen said that this shouldn't be taught that there was a definite oppressor and a definite victim. For him to mention that would be 
as he said, he wants it to be more equal. The shit wasn't equal when it was going on. I'm, I'm going to show you how unequal Mr. Olsen. And I'm sure you know. That's why you don't want you want it cut away from remembrance. You want to make sure nobody else knows. The, the largest slave trade in the history of the world was created by white Christian Europeans. Before it was over, as many as 60 million Africans would be killed for the profit of white Christian imperialism. Again, for the profit of he, Mr. Olsen, has a problem with the truth being told that America was founded on this same profit. The profits and proceeds from this very same thing. He don't want anybody to know this. A key reason for the high death toll was the tidal wave of war and desolation that the slave trade unleashed in the heart of Africa. Huge numbers of people died being marched to the coast of Africa from the interior as well as in an endless series of wars produced by the quest for new slaves. Millions would die in concentration camps at both ends of the sea journey and significant numbers would die due to the appalling conditions of the slave ships themselves. The financial profits of this slave trade helped build the economic foundations of America. All that shit Mr. Olsen was talking about was him just spewing shit from the orifice of his face. But he and many others like him want to cut because those people were Israel, were of the biblical nation of Israel. And just like the Bible said about the enemies of Israel. They have come together and said, let us cut their name from remembrance. I'm going to read a little bit more about this. It was not just the South that profited here in America. Northern Bill's businesses' interests made huge profits too. Every, as I remember in one of their songs, from sea to shining sea, every part of this place profited. If any part of it touched the sea, it profited. This whole wicked place. So, Mr. Olson, I would like to thank you. Me personally. As an Israelite, I want to thank you for proving the Bible for me. You and every other lawmaker like you, I want to personally thank you for proving 
that which the Bible said. Let me get a little bit more of this because I want you to see the number of deaths they also want. And this didn't happen to everybody. It happened to one victim. That is the biblical nation of Israel. Again, it's made up of 12 different nations, but they're all one people. It is difficult to estimate the exact death toll that resulted from the transatlantic slave trade. This is how, this is how many, it was that much death. It's so much blood here in the soil of this place. We ain't gonna even talk about when this place goes Let's say when they went over to, we'll just say Iraq. And literally change that place's government forcefully. We ain't gonna even just look at blood in instances like that, that this particular, that this wicked ass place known as America or Babylon. We're not going to even look at that. We're just going to look at the actual blood. That this place is still. In regards to Israel. It is difficult to estimate the exact death toll that resulted from the transatlantic slave trade. There weren't exactly people measuring these numbers at the time. What we looked at are historical estimates. So we just gonna look at some estimates of how many people may have died in capture during the voyage at sea and due to disease starvation and backbreaking labor in the new world where was the new world america babylon but what is certain is that the slave trade was a genocide against the african people now that is something that Mr. Olson doesn't want to admit. The beginning of this said who these oppressors were when it comes to America. When it comes to America. White Christian European. The reason it, in Revelations 18, it is stated to come out of her, you people of Israelite descent, y'all better come out of Christianity. This is what the Christians, this is what Christianity did to you initially and your people initially. Y'all better come up out of her so that you won't be included in her iniquities. Most I didn't make no mistakes in the wording of that. That is exactly how it's written in his word. And I'm going to touch on why. Right after this, this is not going to be a long truth thought at all. Because it's almost like. I've talked, I've done two other lessons in regards to this. I was asked if I had knew about this um, about a year ago, a year or two ago, yeah. Well, these bills 
are there. There was a point in time when they were looked at. They're there now, just like bills to ban the Bible. There are bills that exist banning the Bible, Israel. This Bible is that real. It tells you of things like this that are to come, and they are in fruition. We just read Psalm 83. And lo and behold, that's exactly what these people are trying to do. But what is certain is that the slave trade was a genocide against the African people. The transatlantic slave trade was also the largest long distance coerced movement of people in history. See, it's accountability for shit like that. It's accountability for statements like that. They don't want to excel. But you got to accept accountability. The truth is just the truth. The estimate of the number killed during the transatlantic slave trade varies anywhere between six to a hundred and 50 million people of the biblical nationality of Israel. Because that's who this happened to. That's exactly who this happened to. The official UN estimate is 17 million. That's their estimate. However, we ourselves would be inclined to agree the figure of 60 million. They, they, I, I tell you, Esau do the same. They are so much the same people. <laughs> First, they try to make it seem like it wasn't so bad. Then folks remind them, no, the shit was that bad. Then they say, well, I just want it all to go away. This is, this is how they are. They've always been this way. They whine and cry all the time. If you don't believe it, look at Isaac and, and how Esau whined and cried for some type of blessing. These are the same people. They whining and crying now. Because Israel waking up. And I also did a, a truth for thought called the real great awakening. I said back then, and that real great awakening is happening now. And look at how many people are waking up. This is the real great awakening. Not that bullshit because you got to learn about <laughs> different roots of Christianity with what they tried to teach you was the great awakening. But you get to, I, I literally give you the real deal in the real great awakening that is happening now it was happening then there were people waking up even back when I did the truth for thought and it's an older truth for thought. it's in the archive you can still go and view it but it's older 
much older. Given all the variables here, including the fact that during the entire period of the slave trade, Africa's population did not increase. Some may argue, these people like Mr. Olson, he would argue this. It's because Europe had advanced medicine and technology while Africans didn't. So why were we dying, Mr. Olson, when your forefathers? And I'm just going to call a spade a spade. I'm a little different. You can call me different. That's fine. But what you can say is that I lied. Your forefathers, Mr. Olson, brought my forefathers over here. Right? We started dying because of pestilence that you all carry. Because your people aren't clean at all. Your people didn't even know how to cleanse themselves. Do you know that that was taught to your people, Mr. Olson? And guess who taught them? Very rhetorical question for me because I know. Your people brought my people over here. Yes, your people were the oppressor. My people were the victim. All, everything that the bill that you wrote wants to all of a sudden do away with. Make it just go away. That's not how this shit roll. I, I'm sorry to be the bearer of very real and true news to you. That's not how it go. Because there is a, and I did a truth for thought on Babylon and the prophecy of what's to happen to Babylon, which you can read about it in Revelation 18. In fact, let's go there. Let's go there. I'm going to go on and on. Go on and finish this off. Go on and finish this off because Esau, you think you are smart. You really, really think you do. You, you really think that you are, but you got to understand the all-knowing. And I, I, I literally caught flack from some Edomites because of this. I literally told the truth about how the most high, the, the qualities of the most high, the great and terrible all-knowing most high God of Israel, right? I did a truth for thought on how great and terrible he is. And Esau went and whined and cried. That's not true. That's not true. Then what the hell did I read then, Esau? What did I read, you Edomites, who y'all tried so hard to push this stuff? Y'all tried so hard. But the real great awakening is happening. And my beloved brother just yesterday did a true for thought. I mean, well, not a true for thought, but did a lesson. And it addressed what's going to happen to a lot of people. And a lot of those people are people like you, Mr. Olson. Edomites. Of Esau. Of Idumian. Now what's crazy is y'all say y'all read the Bible. And y'all 
love God and all you Christians say that. When to love God is to do his commandments. One of his commandments is keep the Sabbath holy. So why are you on church on Sunday? But it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. That's another, that's a whole nother argument for a whole nother day. I want to go to Revelations 18. I want to go to Revelations 18. And we just going to get verses 5 and 6. Only verse 5 and 6. This is talking about good old America. Good old Babylon. For her sins have reached unto heaven and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her double according to her works in the cup which she have filled to her double. Mr. Olson, yes. Even the most high says that there was one oppressor here in your forsaken land of America and only one victim that victim being his chosen people his chosen nation his children of Israel So to not only Mr. Olson, but all the other lawmakers that's going out of their way to make this very, very easy for me. See, y'all make y'all make it so easy for me because y'all prove the Bible to be true. You all prove with 47 bills today. You all prove. Psalms 83 to be true. For that, I thank you. You make what I do much easier to do. But there's one thing, the main motivation behind it. Whether you want to say it or not, Mr. Olson, or your constituents. And it's the very last thing that I'm going to cover for this truth of thought. And that's Revelations chapter 13 and verse 10. And I went over this even with the reparation. When I said, come, let us hear the conclusion to the matter. We're going to go to Revelation. Chapter 13 and verse 10. This is what the ultimate problem that they have is. It's just they know they've read this Bible before. They vote. They voted to have the Apocrypha taken out. Yet the Roman Christian Church still read it, but simply named it the Deuteronomo, Deuteronomo Chronicles. So for a long time, there were people that were like, what are the Deuteronomo Chronicles? Come to find out, it's the Apocrypha. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. See, that scares people like Mr. Olson. That, that scares them. That scares other lawmakers like Mr. Olson. That scares some of the just common Edomites. That's why they back people like Mr. Olson. 
But more, even more so scary is he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. We read about up to 150 million dead at the hands of the good old red, white, and blue. It's you, Mr. Olsen. It's your place. It's, it's, it's your house. It's too late to be scared now. See, time is drawing now. Let me finish this. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. This further proves why that Israelite in that prayer in Psalms was praying for the demise of his oppressor that is the patience that the saints the Israelites that is the faith we we definitely have faith in the most high and he literally says vengeance is he is for his children the children of Israel. Oh, yeah, vengeance is here. See, that scares people like Mr. Olson. It scares people who back Mr. Olson. But what's crazy is there are people who back Mr. Olson, and I noticed he didn't talk about these people in his bill. There are people that back Mr. Olson that want things to be like that again. See, that's when America was great. They want to make America great again. See, it was great for a certain oppressive people. see time is drawing now and it's scaring them and just like my beloved brother Mike Mallis said just yesterday they know what's coming for them and they know it's not any man But it is a father and his son. And the outlook don't look good for them. Israel, this Bible is very real. Psalms 83 is not there for no reason. And if this is not proof to you that they are trying to cut they are going out of their way to cut our forefathers from remembrance because they're willing to cut their forefathers from remembrance. They're willing to do that. But while they're willing to do that, they want to forcibly cut our forefathers from remembrance. But like Revelations 13, 10 says, y'all, what they have to, what they can't get around. First, they can't get around. It was already written. They was going to do shit like this. They can't get around it now. Like I said, I want to thank you all, all you lawmakers that, that rolled up your sleeves to prove the Bible. For people like me, I want to thank you as the most high use you well to do just that, to prove his word.
but understand he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. It ain't nothing that that uh, that none of your bills can do about that. He that killeth with the sword shall die by the sword. There's nothing that any of your bills can do about that. Israel, keep your eyes open as time is drawing nigh. The world is really proving the Bible to be true. More and more so. There are more and more prophecies that are coming into fruition in the world around you. My goal today was to let you know they are doing exactly what Psalms 83 said. They're attempting to cut the people that you descend from. The chosen people of the Most High. They are trying to cut them from remembrance. And I want to end it right there. Love you, Israel. Until next time. It's your beloved brother, Marcus G. I bid you shalom. Till next time, be it the most high. Be it his will. All praises to the most high. Shalom, Israel.